Hey everyone, welcome to a quick tutorial on text to 3D or image to 3D in Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11, which you should have already installed. Then we go to Extensions, Available, Load From, and I already have it installed, so I have to unhide it. So unhide, and then you can do a search in your browser, which uh, in Chrome, it's Control G. I think the same thing for Firefox. And then bring up this little dialog. So I typed in 3D. Search down for text slash image to 3D model. And just when you're browsing these extensions, a little thing is you can hold down Control. And if you click on the link, it'll bring you to the GitHub page and explain what that extension does, okay? So then you have to go to install, apply and restart. And once you have that done, we can go over to text slash image to 3D model. Now, you can try using the text by changing the mode here and put in a, something like cat, and uh, it's, it's pretty trash. Um, the model that they're using, it's only a 300 meg model and not part of our larger checkpoints or stable diffusion checkpoints and safe tensors. The results are pretty limited right now, but I mean, it's just this is just something to experiment with. Uh, so keep it down to image. I'm going to previously I posted the chair. So this one, this chair, this chair worked well, but for um, and this little this little hedgehog did not. Uh, the mailbox worked well, and the womb chair did not. So you can kind of see that it works on really simple uh, objects. So this seemed to be a good test, uh, was this computer that is a little cartoonish, but it has enough, there's just enough detail in here. And I find that you probably want, I only did a few tests, but it sh should look on a perspective not uh, head on so it has some it can see the depth and the shape so we drag that over and we the batch size we only need to produce one of these at a time so reduce that to one the keras steps crank that to a hundred doesn't really add much time and if you turn it off you'll generate about a thousand steps and the quality will be slightly better but for this experiment we don't need to do that and keep clip to noise this is uh the float 16-bit definitely keep that checked there is no difference in the 32 you cannot see a thing and it's way faster at 16. now the guidance i found for this result between two and six seemed to work well i'm going to put it at four for now i have no idea what s churn does i couldn't find any documentation on that so we hit submit didn't like the results with the guidance scale at four so i've increased it to six resubmitted and it's here, but unfortunately, when I'm using the recording software for the screen capture, it uh, it's not permitting an image to display. So that's okay. You would see this thing floating right here, and you can move it around and look at the results. I'm going to go right into MeshLab and import this because we need MeshLab, which is free, in order to convert the baked-in vertex paint to a texture and UV map. Uh, so I'll get the last one I just made and that is here. And you'll see that display. It's not, you know, this is the results. It is what it is. And to convert this texture, we go to filters, texturing. This one here, I'm not gonna try to say that, trivial per triangle. The settings are 500. Default, zero, and apply, close. Now we go to back to texture, and we're gonna transfer the textures, uh, sorry, the, we're gonna transfer the texture, vertex attributes to texture, okay? And then everything here is default. So apply, close, now we're going to save it again as uh, export. We're going to save it as a OBJ again and right in the same directory we were working on. And we're going to call this computer default 
OK. Now we go into Max, Import, Computer, all these defaults. Um, I'm using ZBrush. Yes, ZBrush, not ZBrush. And all these defaults here, except you need to go to Normals and click on Auto Smooth. OK, and then we import that. There we have our first ever model, text to model. It looks like it needs some moving, a little editing, I think, just to fine tune it a bit. Um, and so we go to, I'm in an F-Storm, so I'm gonna convert that object to an F-Storm object, and then I'll render the, render the scene so you can see that it actually worked. And there we go. It's, it's, not, it's not pretty but it is an interesting experiment. So there we have it. We got our computer and we rendered it from an image that we pulled off the web. It's a fun experiment and I hope you have a great day.